Pentagon officials say it housed chemical weapons components. Sudan, though, insists the facility only produced medicines. Also hit with cruise missiles, suspected terrorist base camps in Afghanistan. The United States says they were run by Osama bin Laden, an exiled Saudi millionaire who has threatened America with terrorist attacks. Before he departed Martha's Vineyard for Washington, Mr. Clinton explained the reasons for Thursday's action. I ordered this action for four reasons. First, because we have convincing evidence these groups played the key role in the embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania. Second, because these groups have executed terrorist attacks against Americans in the past. Third, because we have compelling <clears throat> information that they were planning additional terrorist attacks against our citizens and others with the inevitable collateral casualties we saw so tragically in Africa. And fourth, because they are seeking to acquire chemical weapons and other dangerous weapons. Terrorists must have no doubt that in the face of their threats, America will protect its citizens and will continue to lead the world's fight for peace, freedom, and security. Key United States lawmakers are commenting on the attacks. Senator John McCain, a Republican from Arizona and a Senate Armed Services Committee member, spoke to reporters a short while ago. I regret the lack of consultation with Congress. Uh, this is a very uh, significant step. However, uh, again, I think the president did the right thing. I think the majority of the American people will support him, especially the families of those whose lives were taken in the senseless act of terror that was inflicted on our, at our U.S. embassies. President Clinton is expected to say more about the attacks in about a half hour. Let's go now to CNN senior White House correspondent Wolf Blitzer. Wolf. Judy, uh, administration officials say that last uh, Wednesday on August 12th, uh, the president began to get the uh, process going, that U.S. intelligence by then had come around to the conclusion that Osama bin Laden and his group uh, were responsible for the twin bombings at the U.S. embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam in East Africa. Uh, another uh, key, key date was Friday, last Friday, when uh, they concluded that U.S. Uh, strikes would, in fact, go forward. They wanted to get some more intelligence information. And and early this morning, uh, a senior official from the National Security Council, uh, General Donald Carrick, flew up uh, secretly to Martha's Vineyard, we're told, to brief President Clinton uh, and to get the final authorization, the final sign-off for these uh, twin strikes against Osama bin Laden's operations in Afghanistan and in Khartoum in the Sudan. President Clinton got word of the operation, of course, as we've reported. He spoke, uh, uh, spoke out at Martha's Vineyard, interrupting his vacation and is now meeting with his top national security advisors in the cabinet room here in the White House. As soon as he's finished, he will prepare to address the nation from the Oval Office. Shortly after uh, leaving Martha's Vineyard, he began making telephone calls to world leaders, including uh, Britain's Tony Blair, uh, Egypt's Hosni Mubarak, and Pakistan's Nawaz Sharif, Pakistan having been helpful uh, in, uh, in gathering intelligence information uh, to the United States and also making a suspect available to authorities in Kenya for questioning the suspect allegedly has confessed to being part of Osama bin Laden's group. Uh, Mr. Clinton has also been on the phone with the members Members of the uh, leadership in the Congress and uh, officials here at the White House, White House have been gratified that House Speaker Newt Gingrich immediately went out and endorsed this operation. He had been briefed in advance, just as the Senate Republican leader, the Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott, had been briefed in advance. And Trent Lott has just released a statement saying, quote, uh, despite uh, any current controversy, he was citing what he had said last January in his response to the President's uh, State of the Union address. This Congress will vigorously support the President in full defense of America's interests throughout the world. Trent Lott also suggesting that the response ordered by President Clinton and carried out by the U.S. military today was, quote, appropriate and just. Uh, it, uh, U.S. Official, White House officials here are also very angry that Senator Dan Coats of Indiana and perhaps a few other Republicans are accusing President Clinton of what's called the, the wag the dog theory, trying to divert attention from President Clinton's own personal problems involving the Monica Lewinsky investigation. One official here at the White House saying only a little while ago, quote, it makes my blood boil. If we didn't act now, more Americans would have died. 
referring to uh, the president's suggestion that intelligence reports uh, said Osama bin Laden's group was gearing up for more operations against U.S. interests around the world. Bernie? Wolf Blitzer at one of the nerve centers in this breaking story. Another one, the United States Pentagon. Our man there, Jamie McIntyre. Well, Bernie, Pentagon sources confirmed to CNN that these two attacks were carried out by U.S. cruise missiles fired from U.S. ships in both the Red Sea and the Arabian Sea. Uh, Pentagon officials are not saying how many ships were involved, but uh, there were seven U.S. ships in the region capable of firing Tomahawk cruise missiles. And in fact, sources say this was an exclusively a cruise missile attack in order to preserve the element of surprise and minimize the risk to U.S. pilots. These uh, cruise missiles can travel uh, great distances uh, very accurately using uh, global positioning satellites to find their targets and can inflict substantial damage. As you can see from the pictures provided by Sudanese television, uh, this damage to this uh, pharmaceutical plant, which the United States says was making chemicals that could be used for dangerous nerve gas, uh, this is the kind of damage that is typically done by cruise missiles. Uh, the other a target, of course, was the uh, training camp and base camp of Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. Uh, you heard a spokesman earlier say that uh, bin Laden was, uh, was alive. U.S. officials cannot confirm that, although they say they were not targeting uh, any specific individual, but rather the infrastructure that supported uh, Osama bin Laden and his campaign of terrorism uh, around the world. But at this point, uh, while officials uh, clear, here clearly uh, would not be too upset if bin Laden were killed in this attack, they say they have no confirmation that he's in fact alive, as uh, a spokesman in Kabul has said. Bernie? Jamie McIntyre at the Pentagon. Jeff Greenfield, our political analyst. Bernie, it's worth noting that while much has been made of the reactions of Senator Specter and Coates, the great majority of Republicans have supported this move. House Speaker uh, Gingrich, Trent Lott, Orrin Hatch, who's on the Intelligence Committee, as well as being Senate Committee Chair. It's interesting that Senator Jesse Helms, who has always held the President in minimum high regard, issued a statement praising the action, but praising the valor of the U.S. military. He never mentioned the President one way or the other. But clearly, most Republicans are coming back and saying this is warranted. For the diplomatic reaction now, we're going to go to the State Department and CNN's correspondent, Andrea Koppel. Andrea? Good afternoon, Jeff. I've just received uh, from the State Department what they call a worldwide caution. This is a public announcement. It is not quite as severe as, a, as an issuance of danger. But what they say is that uh, any Americans who are traveling to the following countries, Somalia, Sudan, Republic of Congo, Brazzaville, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Guinea-Bissau should be aware that embassy operations in those countries have been suspended. Also, this is a general world word of caution to, to Americans traveling elsewhere in the world. In light of the, uh, the two military attacks in Sudan and Afghanistan, Americans should be aware they should be on uh, heightened alert in countries all around the world. One of those who is in briefing the president right now is Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, according to a senior administration official. Since the very beginning, Secretary Albright, essentially since the Saturday after the bombings, has been involved with the other members of President Clinton's national security team in trying to formulate the what do next. Uh, essentially, from the very beginning, as we heard Wolf report, uh, U.S. intelligence had fingered bin Laden as the days turned into a week essentially by the end of the first week the evidence was mounting and was extremely strong that bin laden and others associated with bin laden were behind these two terrorist attacks in east africa and essentially what they were doing was looking for the right time to retaliate secretary albright was in east africa earlier this week and and when asked by reporters whether or not she had a message for the Afghan government, for the Taliban militia. She said that if they want to be members of the international community, they should not harbor terrorists. As of this day, the U.S. does not have diplomatic relations and does not recognize the Taliban militia as the legitimate government in Afghanistan. Uh, a senior, uh, senior administration official told me, Jeff, that essentially the government, the U.S. government, got an answer from the Taliban militia on Tuesday, and that answer was, we're not turning over bin Laden. We are not going to hand him over. We are essentially going to protect him. Whether or not that had any, in, any uh, factor in the U.S. decision to attack in Sudan and Afghanistan is not is unclear. 
Reporting live, I'm Andrea Koppel, CNN at the State Department. Andrea, thank you. And we want to turn now to a guest who has worked with the U.S. State Department on combating terrorism. Robert Oakley has also served as ambassador to Zaire, to Somalia, and Pakistan. He's now teaching peacekeeping and security at the National Defense University. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Mr. Oakley, first of all, was this the right thing to do on the part of the U.S.? I think it's a useful first step. <clears throat> it shows our resolve. It shows that we do know who is behind uh, these attacks. Even if we didn't get bin Laden, uh, it may disrupt uh, his operations for a while. And uh, all this is very useful. I think a sign of strength right now is very important for the United States. What do you mean a useful first step? Well, we haven't uh, come anywhere near destroying bin Laden's uh, far-flung operations or the various groups that work with him. And we can't do it by ourselves. We're going to have to get a lot of cooperation from other governments, some of which is already beginning, in identifying these networks and beginning to roll them up, contain them in the first instance, and eventually uh, neutralize them. How risky was this? Well, it wasn't terribly risky because uh, we used Tomahawk missiles, uh, maybe 25 of them in the Sudan, 50 of them in uh, Pakistan, I mean in Afghanistan. But there's always a chance of retaliation against Americans elsewhere, but uh, the attacks have already been planned. Uh, that's why we evacuated American citizens from both uh, Albania and Pakistan, uh, because there were operations planned against the United States. Well, what about those attacks that uh, the U.S. Uh, said it thought was being planned or believed was being planned against Americans? Why shouldn't we now believe that, uh, this is, that what has happened today is going to encourage further attacks? I think a demonstration of strength of this kind will discourage them. It won't stop them, uh, but it also will encourage those who want to work with us to stop these things because it is a multilateral, multinational effort. We can't do it by ourselves. We learned that in the past. We had a similar situation in the mid-1980s with a lot of terrorism coming out of the Middle East, uh, supported various times by the Iraqis, the Syrians, the Libyans. Uh, we bombed Libya, which produced a marked uh, diminution in terrorism coming out of Libya. And uh, it generally had a good effect, but it takes a long time to do it. We it stepped up our attention to the peace process at that time. We provided more protection in the Gulf for our friends. All these things have to go together as part of a long-term effort to really get at the terrorist threat. You're aware of the, the criticism, or the whispers at least, uh, that are already uh, taking place, that, that there may have been a political motive here given the, the difficulties the president is experiencing right now. Are you absolutely persuaded that this was a justified move? I think it was. Uh, I don't want to get into the wag the dog syndrome, but uh, I think this is something we needed to do uh, for lots of reasons uh, we've already talked about. I think also that uh, there's going to be a little controversy about the pharmaceutical plant in the Sudan. As I understand, it was one which is dual purpose. In other words, it could have been converted to uh, the production of chemical weapons. Whether it was doing that or not is not known. Therefore, there'll be a lot of controversy about whether that was the right target or not. Mr. Oakley, this is Jeff Greenfield. What about the other side of this? Do you put any credence in the idea that a president weakened by domestic politics one way or the other isn't, does in fact encourage um, people abroad to take action? That's why I think a sign of strength on the part of the United States was badly needed. Uh, we've not shown uh, much resolve in uh, diplomatic issues or military issues in the past in terrorism, and I think it's time that we did uh, stand up and showed our resolve. All right, Robert Oakley, thank you very much for joining us and our continuing coverage of today's strikes by the United States against Libya and Afghanistan will continue in just a moment. Birds use color to attract other birds. Fish use color to attract other fish. Shouldn't businesses use color to attract more business? Get bright colors with Hammer Mill Jet Print, the paper that works. These are the real heroes of the American economy. Men and women across this country who work hard for their families. Their sacrifice has brought our economy back, and their tax dollars have given us the first budget surplus in almost 30 years. But even with a $1.6 trillion surplus, some in Washington still want more than $500 billion in new tobacco taxes. Isn't it time to give hardworking Americans a break? Contact your member of Congress. Tell them to oppose new tobacco taxes. Hear about the politician's new game? Bashing HMOs and other health plans to trick you into voting for them. 
In this game, if politicians win, you could lose. The politicians' new laws and regulations could cause nearly two million hardworking Americans to lose their health coverage. Some game. Politicians win votes while families lose health coverage. That's why so many groups oppose this game. They know that when politicians play doctor, real people can get hurt. Okay, pop quiz. At Office Max, you save money on A, electronics, B, furniture, C, everything for back to school. Pencils down, it's D, all of the above. Trick question. Office Max, we go to the max for you. So it's true, isn't it? You guys really are moving? Yeah. Well, that's just great. Well, listen, they have to sell the house first. So? Well, selling a house takes time. We'll at least have the whole summer together. You think? Our magazine helps shape your home. We can help sell it, too. Better Homes and Gardens.